to my channel. Thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me this morning. I woke up about half an hour ago and just decided that I wanted to film this video because I've been getting a lot of questions about my skin since I first started breaking out like two winters ago and I'll insert some clips here because I definitely filmed during this time and during that time I was also getting a lot of responses of like why are you breaking out this way are you healthy are you good girl what's going on and I don't think I've really made a skin video so I wanted to do that and um, this is my skin now I don't have any makeup on and I probably have a little bit of puffiness from just waking up but it's not perfect and I don't think it'll ever be whatever perfect is but um it's definitely clear it's not irritated but overall it feels pretty happy and if you just want to know what products that i use i'm going to put the timestamp here for when i start talking about the products and how i actually cleared it but i did just want to get into the journey of just breaking out because um i just feel like everything in my life becomes this very deeply spiritual lesson and reminder and allows me to go so deeply inward and I just wanted to share that because I know that we probably have all had moments in our lives where we're confronted with something that we don't like about ourselves, whether externally or internally. And it's a great time to find so much resilience in your inner being. Let's just get into it. So I started breaking out about two winters ago and I've always had pretty clear skin. When I went vegan, my skin was even more clear and just literally felt and looked poreless because cheese I think was the only thing I was eating that was still kind of breaking me out beyond like puberty and the hormonal times when you're young where naturally you have more acne. And then I started to fall deeply madly in love and this is when I started to break out and I could not find a reason why I started to get really deep under the skin zits and blackheads and whiteheads and pretty much all different kind of acne on my face and it was just bumpy everywhere on my forehead it started out just on the sides of my face and like the outside of my cheeks and then it just like took over my whole face everything where there was just acne in every part of my face nothing in my vegan diet had changed i was eating fats which i was afraid to do for the first like two years of being vegan because of the high carb low fat diet that i was kind of like I don't know ushered into which I thought was normal which is not really that normal and so I was eating fats I was eating nuts and avocados and salads and just different leafy greens and fruit and it was like really exciting time for my palate because I was really allowing myself to eat just a plethora of different foods but because I was falling in love I was confronted with every single wall that I had built up around love that I didn't even know was there I have so much love in my heart and so much love that I love to share with others that I never imagined that I would be closed off to receiving love and it was intense so all of my negative coping methods started to come back because it was this debate in my head all the time where like this person's love just didn't align with the love I was giving to myself, the identity that I was defining myself through. I feel like I wasn't ready to receive that. Or you're never really ready to fall in love, it just kind of happens. But um, all of my negative coping methods came back because I was kind of battling with myself in my head. I started binge eating, I started cutting myself, I started having suicidal thoughts and a lot of anxiety. During this binge eating period, it got really bad. Like, <laughs> I would order food and just stuff it down and I could physically just feel myself needing to address something like deep in my gut and just stuffing more food down so that I could just like avoid it and pat it and then right after I would feel really guilty and then I would binge eat even more. I thought, okay, maybe this is why I'm breaking out. Let me stop doing this. I traveled through Thailand, Bali, and Japan. I also blamed my acne on the different weather and climates that I was experiencing. And I was extremely lethargic this whole time. Like I just wanted to sleep all damn day. And I was like, I don't know if I can do this vegan diet anymore. The first thing that people usually look at when they're breaking out is their diet. So that's what I was doing. And this is the time that I started supplementing because I thought I must be really low in iron and iodine and other nutrients that I need because I just want to sleep all day. And then I went through my yoga teacher training and so much of that was reversed, just the energetic state of my being. I learned how to cope with my anxiety and work through my anxiety. I learned to cultivate energy in a way that didn't like blast me out of my body like a lot of intense breathwork practices can do. And I 
wasn't as exhausted as I was that whole time and I realized that it was literally just my depression that was making me want to sleep all day and when I got back to the US I took all my blood work, got all my blood work done and I wasn't deficient in anything. Like the doctors pretty much told me that I just could leave and there was nothing to discuss because my iron levels, my calcium levels, my B12, everything was up to par and there was nothing for them to discuss with me. And I was just so shocked because this whole time I was blaming it on me being deficient in something. I was like, okay, it was all literally energetic and emotional. The mind is a very interesting tool and it doesn't always know the difference between an inner experience and an outer experience. A lot of times we get anxiety just from daydreaming a bad situation in our mind and our whole body is like in a state of fear. And that's what I was doing to myself when I was having these life ending thoughts all the time was that I was filling my mind and my inner experience with fearful thoughts, with life ending thoughts that would make my whole body respond accordingly and I was basically existing within a state of fear and stress which as we have been learning actually degenerates the body like stress and sadness is not good for just your physical health not just your mental health but your physical health these vessels are actually really sensitive and that can be a good and bad thing it's like all the negativity that you're pouring into yourself will be experienced and reflected in your life but the same way goes for positivity all the love and all the joy that you fill yourself with will be reflected into your life and it's about choosing what experience you want to have for yourself and it's never too late to shift your experience and to switch from a state of fear to a state of love and i think that alone could have been the reason that i was breaking out but when i got back to the states and i got my blood work done i finally started to see a dermatologist and this is when my skin really started to heal it was the beginning of the actual healing of the skin because i didn't know what to do this whole time like when i was traveling i didn't know what to put on my skin to make it stop being so inflamed so my dermatologist started to give me extractions once a month and she would use this little bowl thing that was looks like this, it had a little hole on the bottom of it and it was like this big and it basically would pop my pimples and collect the pus and she would just push down on my face and do this for about an hour and I would leave with a bunch of little scabs all over my face which arguably looked worse than the pimple itself and these scabs would be on my face for about a week and then they would fall off and the pimple would be gone underneath my skin. She also put me on a skincare regimen of cleansing my face twice a day, morning and night, with this sulfate cleanser. And then in the morning, I would apply a cream. At night, I would apply a cream called Epidua Forte. And I would moisturize morning and night with this hyaluronic acid water-based moisturizer that was really light because I have combination skin. So I get kind of oily around my nose and my T-zone, but then my cheeks can get really dry and flaky. So that was good for me to not have a really heavy moisturizer, although I don't really support Neutrogena a lot. I just wanted to do exactly what she recommended to me because I just wanted to heal my skin. I also used a sunscreen in the morning by the brand Elta MD and I put that on every day without fail and I put it on my neck as well and on my hands and on my tattoos and just pretty much all over my body. All those things really started to help my skin. Even when those started to clear away, I was still left with so many scars for months. Like the scars were very dark and intense. And the things that I did to help with the acne scars were of course wear sunscreen. I also started to use aloe vera on my face every single evening and that helped so much. I don't want to recommend it to you because I'm not a dermatologist and it may be like too thick for your skin, but I would just use fresh aloe vera and put the goopy stuff all over my under eyes and on my scars and I would even like massage it on my boobs and literally all over my skin. I feel like it always makes my skin look so much more youthful and just like, ah, uh, just, I don't know what the word is. It's like dewy and it's moisturized and it just looks healthy and vibrant. So I love using just fresh aloe vera. Sometimes I'll just keep it in my fridge and it's nice when it's a little bit cool because it does reduce puffiness and that really helped me with my scars. Also using rosehip oil just on the scar affected area and also scars are the divots in your skin. So what I'm really referring to is hyperpigmentation and I was still filming during this time. So a lot of people were saying a lot of things about my skin, like what happened to her and not even trying to be rude like some of them. But then there were the haters, which I just wanted to like talk about this because it was a really interesting moment. I feel like 
I always feel bad that I unintentionally trigger people with the way that I look or people like see boobs and then they make all these assumptions about me and I feel like people can't always relate to my struggles or my journey especially with my own body and appearance because I'm closer to what society's expectation of what a like, woman's body is supposed to look like and I've always understood that like it's my journey is so valid and my stories and my struggles are so valid but I understand why people can't always relate to them and they're like oh well I get that you were hurt but your body is, looks great to me so I don't understand like how you could be unhappy with it you know that's always been a thing where I would feel a little guilty and like I wish I could be more representation for people because everyone needs to have representation of themselves in the media whether that be mixed girls or curvy girls or people with stretch marks or gender non-conforming people who like identify in a similar way as them you know I feel like everyone needs to have a little bit of representation of themselves in the media or be their own representation and I have such a guilty personality that I would start to feel guilty for not being everyone's representation. Then when I started to break out and people's intense aversion to my face and my acne started to like pop up in the comments, I really realized that it doesn't matter what the hell I look like, people who don't want to like me are gonna find a reason not to like me. And a lot of these comments were from men for some reason, like putting me down. And I, they got to a point where I almost just had to laugh because anytime anyone has intense aversion to something, it's a clear sign that there's something within themselves that needs to be looked at. How do you react to yourself when you have an imperfection? Like, how do you respond and show up for yourself when there's something about you that you don't like? Because I can't control this acne and your response to it is like you care about it more than I do. This really just started to change the relationship that I had to myself and to my online presence and like still kind of worrying about what people thought about me and it just made me completely let go of just any expectations or any attachments to what people felt about me. It was just like so liberating. Throughout this whole breakout journey, I was learning how to connect with my heart and let that speak for me more than anything. And I definitely took some social media breaks during this time and making my heart and my inner world such a beautiful place for me to live, especially coming from having all of my negative coping methods come back up. It was like, Oh, I just felt so grateful and so thankful for my own awareness and for the lineage of yoga and for the love that I was allowing myself to receive that it didn't matter what I looked like at all and of course when you have something physical about yourself that you're not confident in and you have to walk into a room like it can just affect how you carry yourself and so I started to really learn how to connect to my heart in every moment and I would breathe into my heart every time before I entered a room or started a conversation and I also do this when I struggle with like social anxiety whenever that does come up I just breathe into my heart and ask my heart how it's feeling and I always feel so safe when I connect to love and I always ask what would love have to do here what would love have to say here and then everything just completely shifts you know I'm not worried I'm not stressed I'm not like questioning if I'm good enough it's just like there's just silence and peace and I can step into a room and be myself and share my light and not have any ounce of my confidence like come from my physical self and that feels really good and I experienced something similar to this when I was in college and I had like this huge sty on my eye to the point where it was just a big bump and I was really embarrassed about it but then I just learned to be myself and not worry about my physical appearance so much, which was such a good lesson. And I think that this was the same thing, just magnified even more at this level of being. And I'm so grateful for it because it made my self-love even more resilient and really taught me how to show up to life every single day with no expectations or attachments because I would wake up in the morning and see sometimes like five new really deep zits in my skin and instead of being upset or angry at my skin which I knew wouldn't help it I was just like I love you skin thank you for being you and I would speak to my skin and I still do this now when I'm putting on my creams and stuff I'm just like Thank you skin, you're the best skin, I'm so grateful for you. And I just had equanimity when I would look in the mirror. I wasn't angry about it, I didn't force myself to be happy about it, but I was just like, okay, this is another beautiful day where I can exist and breathe deeply and create something that will channel love into this world. And that's kind of the way that I would set the intention for my day. It's just like, 
this is an opportunity to exist and I'm just so grateful and so humbled to be here and I would just look at my broken out skin and not react and not respond and I'm really grateful for that practice that's something that I want to keep doing throughout my life as I get older and older and you know things sag and things wrinkle and I don't want to feel pressure to like hold on to a version of myself that isn't present in the moment I feel like people sometimes learn that lesson later in life that their inner world is so much more important than anything else and that our appearance makes up like less than 10% of who we actually are. I don't want to see beauty, I feel like I want to experience beauty in myself and other people. Meaning that I don't want to look for beauty externally and just with my eyes, I want to feel it in my heart and have the experience of love for all the relationships in my life. You know, I don't want to just be friends with people just because they look cool or because they have a following or because of what they wear. I want to tap in and tune into my body and see how I feel around people and how different experiences affect my energy and just fully live as a vessel for love, for creativity, for positivity <laughs> and yeah, just be a channel for things to be born through me. I just fully want to let go and surrender and wake up every day and just be like, I'm grateful for this existence. And learning not to react emotionally to things is just such a valuable lesson. Anytime that does come up for me where I'm just like really emotional about something, really distraught, really having intense feelings of pushing something away, I'm like, whoa, I, I need to look at this part of myself. And I get excited for that inner journey of like discovering any other walls that I have built up and why I'm responding this or that way. It's That's like what the journey and the path is all about. I'm just really grateful for every lesson that I am given and breaking out definitely was one of those and I know it can seem like such a first world problem to be worrying about your acne. The way that we look affects how we carry ourselves and how we move through this world. Unfortunately, like yes, it is confronting when you have a physical thing about your appearance that you don't agree with. It's going to affect your art, it's going to affect your relationships and that's what makes it actually really important that you feel good in your skin and that you feel good in your skin no matter what it looks like. And if you are struggling with acne right now, I just highly uh, recommend tuning into your heart and waking up each day with that equanimity and saying just the most beautiful, tender things to your skin and to your body and adorning yourself with, with the experience of love that you deserve in the moment. Anytime that I feel unworthy or I look in the mirror and I don't like something about myself, if I really go to the root of that thought, it always comes from conditioning. It's not my natural instinct and thought to question myself, to feel that I'm not worthy because of a, a little bit of weight gain or like cellulite or whatever it is, pimples, like that's not in my highest nature and my natural state of being to be questioning and doubting myself and hating on myself and when I go to the root of those thoughts, it's like always something that I was taught. It's always something that I read in a magazine when I was younger or a family member telling me that I needed to lose weight. It's just always coming from an external source rather than just naturally being born through me and I've learned to not take those thoughts so seriously because I know that I can just wake up every day and not care what I look like and feel so confident and full of the love that I can share with other people. But that's how I cleared my skin and the journey of confrontation of the self. <laughs> this video has been a little bit rambly, so let me know if you made it to the end. Another thing I'm really grateful for is that this whole acne journey really helped me learn to take care of my skin and be consistent with it and pour love into it and actually moisturize and wear sunscreen, all things that I was not doing consistently. So I'm really grateful for that. And I feel like people who do have a lot of acne, are there are always labels placed upon them, like they must be dirty, they must not be cleaning their face, or they must not be eating well. That's just not the case. People break out for so many different reasons at so many different times in their life. Just putting that out there. Thank you guys for watching this video. I deeply and truly appreciate you. Thank you for seeing me and for receiving me. I say that a lot and what I mean by that is just thank you for receiving my love. Thank you for seeing me. Thank you for hearing the call and listening and for awakening and for taking each step and for trusting and for allowing yourself to be fully seen for all of your light and all of your dark and I hope that you can keep pouring so much love and compassion into those parts of yourself. Yeah, thank you so much. I love you. I'll see you in a video soon. Bye!